guess what time it is, guys. Uh, oh. Prologue, step into the shadows of the Hell House. You've arrived, Pierre, here of Transylvania on business. Destroy forever the curse of the evil Count Dracula. That's right, it's time for Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. I'm not very happy with this. <laughs> Well, actually, kind of. This is actually one of the only Castlevania games I actually own on its original cartridge. Now, first off, here in the game, you start off with around 50 hearts, I believe. There's a couple of things you want to do in this first town here. I think this place is called Jova, if I recall correctly. The first thing you want to do is talk to this guy and buy the white crystal for 50 hearts. And with that, we're out of hearts. Hearts actually aren't ammunition in this game. They are currency. And you have to grind them. And I grind for 150 hearts, and just outside. Because, well... I need to make this flow right. And in here, we actually have another guy that we can talk to, which I believe gives us the... Holy Water. Yep. Holy Water is still massively broken, as it was in the old games. Except this time, it's infinite! And that's always fantastic. And it has another purpose we'll be going into later on in this video. And there is one more thing we want to do here in the, in the town of Jova, and that's jump over these water pits, which will kill you if you fall down. But first, I want to show off just how cryptic these guys can get. Uh, that guy should be good. Let's see here. A flame is on top of the sixth tree in Denise Woods. That one's a bit more precise, but a lot of the townspeople in this game just give such vague hints to what you have to do that I'm not going to talk to them. Anyway, when we talk to this guy, we can buy the Thorn Whip for 100 hearts. Uh, the Thorn Whip is a pure upgrade. In fact, all whips you get in this game are pure upgrades. And you kind of want to get upgrades so you can get stronger quicker. And now we're done here in the town of Jova, we'll actually... I don't think we'll ever be coming back here. And welcome to the main area of the game! Now, you might notice that little... When you pause the button... Uh, pa pause the button. Pause the game, there's a little clock. This game actually uses an in-time system to alternate between tw uh, night and day. During the daytime, like we are right now, enemies have less health and drop uh, about two hearts per... death, uh, if they drop hearts to begin with, that is. At night, they have twice as much health, however, they also drop twice as many hearts. Also, I love the song that plays during the daytime. It's called Bloody Tears. It's pretty much my favorite Castlevania song. <laughs> and we got Mermen. Uh, they're never fun. And the freaking uh, knockback returns, which is never good. And with that, a terrible night to have a curse, and now it's night time. Which also has a pretty nice soundtrack to itself, but uh, it's nowhere near as memorable. Now, the th one of the two other features, actually, not one, that the Holy Water has is that it can actually break down blocks as I just did. The second one is that uh, this is one of those games that kind of does a Mega Man thing where certain blocks look solid, but they're actually not, that you can fall right through them. You can actually use the holy water to identify that. Well, actually, no, I'm thinking of... I was actually wrong a bit earlier. Certain... Certain... Or actually, no, I think all of them may actually use a... All sub-weapons might use a heart. I might be wrong. And I grind up to 256 hearts, which is the maximum, and wait for day to come so I can enter this place. Now this place looks empty, but... nope. Talk to this guy, and we can buy a dagger, which is a much better... Well, actually, it, it damages more, but it's just uh, not as good sub-weapon. It has some good range to it, though. Uh, that'll have its uses in the upcoming places. And this is a church. If you're low on health, uh, you can come in here and rest for a while, and you'll actually get a full health restore. I believe every town has one.
And there's only one last thing to do here in the town of Veros, I believe it's called. And that's to go up here and into this room. Now, I like the last room. This one seems empty, but the hole's actually in the ground, so watch out for that. Oh, and also, uh, the stupid jump physics are still the exact same as it was in the first game. And I forgot what we just got. I think it was another upgraded whip. Yeah, it was. We got the chain whip. <laughs> And with that, we're done here in this town. And we're, that means we're pretty much done here. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I was somewhat wrong. Certain sub-weapons in this game will consume hearts, like the one we'll be getting later on, but it does for a fact I know that now. Had to do a bit of research there, actually. <laughs> also, that purple stuff on the right of the screen there is poison. You, you jump in that and you'll slowly take damage. It's not actual water, so you won't die instantly, so keep that in mind. And yeah, you want to get as many whip upgrades as you can, because uh, otherwise you're going to be in for a world of pain. I hate the fireballs the mermen throw. They're so hard to dodge at times. Then again, I'm just not the best at Castlevania 2 or 3. Castlevania 1, Rondo of Blood, and Symphony of the Night are the only ones I play extensively, so that's why whenever I play Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night, I'm going to be pretty much destroying them. Anyway, welcome to another kick-ass song, for one thing. Welcome to the Burgley Mansion! The thing is, this game takes place, I believe, seven years after the first one. And at the end of the first game, even though it's never seen, apparently when we killed Dracula, he cursed us. And now, seven years later, Simon's come back to go through all these mansions and regain body parts of Dracula. So he can end the curse once and for all. And, wouldn't you know it, that clock system has a second purpose. It determines your ending, because there's three different endings. I'll be showing them all off, thankfully. So, if you want to see any of the endings, you'll be seeing them all at the end of this entire thing, actually. I hate those gargoyle enemies, whatever they're called. I don't know what most of these enemies are called. I think those are armor knights, and these are obviously skeletons. I said that in the reverse order of killing them. <laughs> Surprisingly, the enemies aren't that annoying in this game, aside from those slimes you'll see every now and then. That's just because they can be unpredictable to sense their patterns. Lighter enemies will get harder, but especially in the beginning, they're not bad at all. And those are the fall-throughing, uh, invisible floors I was talking about, or invisible lack of floors. Anyway, this is something that happens every now and then in this. I won't be showing everyone off, but you can find random books in the walls that have vague hints. Like a symbol of evil will appear when you strike the stake. Yeah, this game's ridden with typos like that. So let's get back up to that platform and actually continue on into this place. Technically speaking, you can take the bottom path, but otherwise you wouldn't be able to talk to that guy right there. Or at least not as conveniently. Also, this is just because I don't trust holes over spikes, but... If you see spikes on the floor below you or anything instant death, Always make sure you have your holy water equipped. Makes me wonder though, where is he getting this infinite supply of holy water? Hmm. Anyway, that room right there is actually our goal for this place, but we're not going to get there for another couple minutes. Anyway, we want to get up to that guy up here in the top left, because he has something that's rather important. And from him, for 50 hearts, we can get an oak stake. You need to get one of these for every mansion. There's one of those guys in pretty much every mansion, and you need the oak stake to complete every one. Do not use it prematurely, because it's a one-use item. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I might get silent every now and then, because, uh... <laughs> this game soundtrack's amazing. 
In fact, oh, there's a stupid invisible block right there. That one leads to not instant death, but uh, I know something annoying. Anyway, that little glowing, flickering orb is our gold. You want to get the oak stake out and use it. It'll turn gold, and we now process Dracula's rib, which acts as a shield if you equip it instead of the white crystal. Pretty much blocks projectiles. In fact, there it is right there. I'm going to backtrack out most of those places off screen unless there's something important I have to show. Anyway, with that, we've got one of the five items of Dracula we need to reclaim in order to end our curse. And you might think that means we're a fifth of the way through the game. <laughs> well, actually, not, not quite a fifth, probably more like an eighth. This, it, it's an NES game, it's just, sh it's short, it's just unbearably hard. Especially when you get giant killer eyes from Terraria going after you. Seriously, they look like the Eye of Cthulhu, which, actually, wasn't he taken out of most recent versions of Terraria? Hmm. And also, the bats are still annoying. Also, I think this shield might half damage. I think it might. I'm not quite sure. I don't know all the algorithms. This is a Castlevania game I don't go back to often if it's not obvious. <laughs> Anyway, you might notice these two inconspicuous blocks. You can actually break them and get the Sacred Flame, which is pretty much an upgrade to the Holy Water, except, well, it costs hearts, and I'd rather not lose money in order to protect myself. It's kind of an odd thing I know. It's kind of like not wanting to use Hyper Mode in Prime 3 because you have to inject an energy tank or not using the freaking thing from another game that I can't remember at the moment. Ah, uh, the weird... Golden armor from Twilight Princess. And transition fail. Yeah, there are times where I have to edit out because I will admit I might be using a guide for this one just to make sure I don't miss anything because, yet again, while I own this game, I don't play it often. There's nothing down those stairs for us yet, by the way. But with us getting that first Dracula piece and getting a couple of items, I'm going to need to end it off at the end of the screen. Thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And next time on Let's Play Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, had Quest? Quest. we're going to continue into the town of Algeba during the day and see what we can do there. See you guys then.